Hello, hello. Yep. We are on. Okay. So now we. Say that again? No, Blender. No, I'm kidding. I'm in Maya. Well, that's all we will use is Maya. By the way, the reason why my Maya looks this way is because if I hit Control and Spacebar, it will hide all the menus for me. And it goes to full screen. Write that down. Yes. This gives you more working space. Okay. Okay, good. All right, so we want to start insetting little things like this, right? Making them look beautiful. Nice, clean, and sharp. Clean and sharp. Now, what do you think my primary reason for modeling just half of this and having it just like nice, right? It's so I could easily come in to one half of this, delete it at any given time, and then come back in and mirror it back over, and I've got the same mesh, right? So always working in symmetry. Even if something is asymmetrical, work in symmetry, and then just go into the side that's damaged and just adjust with the damaged side, right? Or, if it's a robot arm, just chop it off and then just add the robot section to it, yeah? If it's a building, easy. You just build it symmetrical. A bomb hit it on this side, then you go and you destroy that side. One of the greatest things you can do as a modeler is look at something and see the history behind it, how it's manufactured. I watched this show a few years ago on PBS, and it was about materials of the world. Like, where does, uh, um, um, how is a Bentley made in England? Where do they get the leather? Why is the leather so soft? Where do they get the metal from? And I watched how they manufactured this Bentley, and they built it up even the layers of paint so now when I'm painting when I'm texturing my models I put a primary co primary coat on it and from the primary coat then I apply the actual paint and then on top of that sometimes I'll add bits of like metal flakes and then once it's all nice and new and shiny I go in and destroy it that means then I chip away all the metal and then I've gone underneath what Primer, the rust, the metal, the raw metal, and then you're just destroying it. I mean, that's how it looks so real. Right? You paint it how it's made. You make it how it's made. Right? That's the best thing you can do is make something how it's made in real life. Texture something how it's painted in real life. All right. So what I will do for this accent, this is the part I need to work on. And if I want to get rid of one side, I could come in right and select the polys for that side, but that's too much work. I'm going to double click on the center line and it should go all the way through. Double click, step one, double click on the center line, and that will select the edge. It will, anytime you double click on something, it's going to loop it, correct? Also, watch this. If I single click an edge, and then double tap the friend next to it, it's going to ring. That's 
what I've just done by double clicking on one edge, that's called a loop. Double clicking on one edge is called a loop. Okay? Single click on an edge and then double clicking the edge next to it is called what? A ring. There you go. Tip of the day. This will help you in your selection process so much easier. Okay? Good. I'm going to double click, loop it, and then I'm going to step two. Control, no, shift, sorry, shift, right click. and go to detach component. So what was that? Shift, right click, forward slash, detach component. That way now, if I go to step three, select face and double click on one face, look what it's done. It's only selected one half of the actual model itself, okay? Now I can go in and hit delete. That means now I have one half of my model. Is it also done on the actual face? Uh, yes, you double click on one half of the face and it will go in and it will delete Okay, now this half of my model is where I will start to do all my detailing. So, I already have the polygons somewhat in place. I'm going to adjust them just a little bit more. So, I'm just going to move them in just to match a little bit better. I, I went a little crazy with my model. And I am starting to curve this stuff to what? To follow topology of this piece right here. Now, here's where it gets fun. I'm going to select the faces. Okay. So watch first and then I'll talk through it again and then you can take notes. I'll select the faces. So this is what I'll do. I'll demo it first, make sure you take a very good look, and then I will tell you exactly the steps, okay? So I'm going to shift, right click, extrude from here. Don't go to offset over here and click on offset and then you can slide back and forth the offset. Okay, something like that. It doesn't need to be exact. Hit enter or, or use your select your uh, use your selection tool. Now I can come in with my vertices, and I can start to move this into place. Now I I want to stay make sure that I stay on the outside of this thing because we're going to in in. Um, extrude back inside again, right? And you don't want it to be too thin because what's it gonna do? The polygons will do what? They'll start overlapping into each other.
gonna bring mine a little short right here okay something like that and like that and like that good and what am I doing I'm making sure that I get this stuff looking correct and I'll bring this so it's even right even topology So I'm adjusting the points. By the way, when you make models, it just doesn't happen, all right? It just doesn't happen. You have to go in and you have to put effort and time into manipulating the points. I used to think, I don't know what I used to I used to think, oh yeah, just if you, there's got to be a button for that. Like I used to think that all the time. Like, oh yeah, just just there's a button. No, it's manual labor. That's what it is. Okay, so that's done. There we go. Oh. So you see what I've done there to select that? I just single clicked and double clicked. And then I just clicked one more. Oh, okay. Now that I have that, here's the important thing. Right, shift, right click, extrude it in. And as you extrude it in, get it in as far as you need it. Hold on. Once you have that, the next important thing to do is to do this. Click on the blue or click on any one of these little squares. And that will turn it over into scale mode or offset. Then you want to offset that extrusion in. Now we can see that. Right? If you leave it at a 90 degree angle, what happens to 90 degree angles? Does anyone know? They get hidden. You cannot see a 90 degree angle. So did you say when you hit the box, you just flip the box, or you click it and drag it from the beginning? The uh, you just click, and you click the box, and then you, there's a, the center will turn back into a uh, little cube. And then you can scale from there, right? Or offset from there. So there's our first one, right? Very nice. So, <clears throat> right, what I did was first I selected these faces. What I did, first I selected all these faces in here, yes? Like that. And that was the big, that was only three faces, four faces. Then I extruded and offset to where I had then these faces. And then what did I do? I moved and manipulated the points to fit the concept. Once I had that, then I selected the faces again, right? And then I extruded inward. And once I had it in far enough, I clicked on the box and I scaled inward, which is offset. So it offset it, it offset those 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 polygons. So therefore, now we have this nice, beautiful edge in there. Okay. Now the next one, right here, going to do the same thing. Yes. Going to select 
that face and that face and we're going to go extrude and then we're going to offset don't offset too much because that'll happen just a little done now from here I'm going to adjust adjust all right I'm going to adjust all these points till I get them exactly where I want them adjust adjust and adjust I'll move this point up like so and I'll take these points I'll move them just slightly up right because I want to keep everything nice and even now I will take this guy and bring him up like so and this guy and bring him down like this and there we go now he's ready to go and also I want to make sure that these lines stay nice and even and straight right always always worrying about topology Now I will select the face, face, shift, extrude, extrude inward, and click the blue box. And then you see how the middle turns into a kind of like this uh, light blue box. Now I can offset. There we go. And that's done. And I actually feel like this should be scaled in a little bit more like the um, center of it. So I'm going to bring that in a little bit more. And then it's, it's too far in. So I'll push it back this way. There we go. Don't get crazy with these extremes. Push right. Okay. Next one. There you go. Now, this is why I had you guys make sure that you were moving things correctly and wasn't over exerting the polygons. Because if you did, it'd be hard to get these little shapes in here. So. Once again, I will select here, 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 and here. And I will extrude, boom, and then I will offset, like here. And a little bit more, yes, perfect. And then, and this is why it's always important to work in like one screen or one viewport, right? Because we can quickly go in, make it full size, and then we have no problems getting things the way we want them. Right. Now, there will be a problem here. This is a problem. This is an issue I've got. See that? That's an issue. So I'm going to take that and backspace. And then what I will do is come here here and I will go here and split just like that I split that right that right down the middle that's if you have that problem then I will come in and connect there you go uh, the connect connect tool yeah and then I will drag these into place there we go. Making sure that my topology is even. There you go. And then I will do the same once again here.
And there you go. All right, so there's the beginnings of making sure that we have those insets. Now with those insets, what do we got to do? We got to go in and we got to start creasing everything. All right, because if we select this and now I go three, look at that, that's no good. Okay. So what are we going to do? We're going to select, go in, select all the center, and we're going to crease. Okay. Actually, before I do that, you know what I'm going to do? Put this thing back together. All right. So I'm going to mirror this, poly select, and go mirror using the symmetrical tool, mirror geometry on the, where is it? Negative X, whoa, 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 no, 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 that's wrong. Top, let's show my grid. And that should be on the, yes, what the hell? But you know what that tells me? That the, um, the model's pivot point is in the wrong place. If I go here, see how it's, no, it's in the right place. That's what I thought. What the hell, man? No, God damn it, that's so wrong, I know. Jesus. All right, I'm gonna delete history. <laughs> you know what? I, I figured it out. Delete history, and then if that happens, go into modify, freeze transformation, and now let's try it. Boom, that was it. Delete history, freeze transformation. Delete history, freeze transformation. Write that down, please. Delete history, freeze transformation, and that will give you a perfect mirror over if you're getting Anything that's wrong, delete history, freeze transformation. <sighs> delete history, freeze your transformation. Now, the next thing we have to do here, and then if you have any, like, when you bring this back again, right, and you have little things like this, select that edge and go hit shift, right click, merge, and then go collapse edge. Man, oh, god damn it. Sorry, don't do nothing yet. This damn 2016. It doesn't we automatically weld. You gotta tell it to. So, make sure that when you mirror it over, watch, let me do that again. Delete. Sorry, when you get used to something, just doing it automatically, you just, Mirror, negative, on the, probably some of you guys may be negative Z or X. See where it says merge, mode, don't, just merge. Just have it on there, god damn it. Now it's one thing. You can tell that by double clicking one face and it will be one thing. Now watch this. These little edges here that like give you this diamond shape, you don't want it. Click that middle one, merge, collapse edge. Select another one, hit G. And now you're cleaning up your mesh. Right here, once again, hit G. There you go, one more time and hit G. 
There you go. Cleaned up. Good. So now I'm going to make sure that I have my modeling panel open and I'm going to switch to symmetry mode, either on the X or the Z world. So that means now when I select an edge, I'm selecting both edges, yes, on both sides. So first thing, I'm going to select the middle edge right here, and I'm going to shift, right click, and crease tool, and drag it all the way over. Once again, I'll select right here, these points, or these edges, and I will hit G, and I will drag it all the way over. Then the outer borders, like this. And drag, and there you go, all the way over. Now, I need my corners to stay sharp. So here, here, all the corners, sharp. Sharp. Actually, I can double click, sharp. Double click, sharp. Anywhere where there's going to be what? No, a corner. Double click, crease, sharp. Double click, sharp. Double click, sharp. Double click, sharp. Now, here. Yeah, 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 Take a look at that. Look at that, nice. Okay, go back to one. I'm taking these ones down because, ah, no. There we go. And then this one. <coughs> no. Just a little, yeah. Like that. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Nice. Okay. Yeah, that's looking tight. All right, next one, right here, and here, 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 and here, 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 that one look at that there we go okay. very nice now watch this still feels a little world of warcrafty yes so if I go control D duplicated it hit W and just move the object over. Now watch what will happen. And then I'll do Shift D again to make another copy. Anytime you have subdivided your model, right? 
and added crease weights to it. What happens is we get this like look crazy looking thing right here, yes? Now, what I can do while it's subdivided is I've, I hit smooth, it'll bring up a dialog box and there's one, that's a, that's a smoothing of one. You see how it went from this soft look to being now more, more hard and sharp, yes? Now watch this, if I select this guy, and I go smooth, and I go two, it's going to make it like razor sharp, like perfect. Boom. Enter. Look at that. Right. So then that one becomes like super razor sharp. Like that's, that's the one you use to kill. Right. But we do not destroy this one. Why? This is the one we will use until the very end to get what? Perfect shapes going on, right? We want to use this all the way through our modeling process. This way we're not messing anything up, right? Here's another edge that needs to be dealt with right here, right? I want these nice flowing shapes. I want hard shapes like that. Hard shapes. Okay. Yeah, like that. See the difference? All right. That's what you got to do. Okay. And now, also. One thing that you can do for the center piece or these little things right here is a trick that I love to do. So if I go back to one, here's what I do. I select the face of these insides like this. And then I go here, duplicate face. I pull it out just a little, and there you go. There's a face. Right. Then what I do is I come here, I go here, select that edge, and I'll get rid of this. And then select that edge, get rid of that, and I'll bring this edge. I'll slide this one down just a little, and this one over, this one up a little. Actually, you know what? No. I'm going to show you guys something new, different, better, new and improved. All right. Does anybody know about live surface? I don't like it. I accidentally click it all the time. Oh, man. <laughs> You're a fool for not liking it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So watch this. Um, so if this is my live surface, There's a button here. See that button? Make, it's the top little buttons here. It, they're, they're the magnets. So you got the ones that we already know. Snap to grid, snap to edge, snap to point, snap to center, and snap, snap to view plane. Oh, I don't know. Okay, I've never used that. Um, and this one, make live. So if I select that object and I say make live, it now becomes a live surface. Now watch this. Now that it's a live surface, come back to my modeling tool. See it says live surface. 
I have something called quad draw. I'm now opening up a new realm of stuff for you. Quad draw. So if I go quad draw, click, 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 click. You've got to catch a bus. All right. Click, 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 click. So what I can easily do is go here, move that one, here, there you go, here, here, There you go. There's one. And then like you have that. That what happens here? Uh, what the hell? Oh, because I'm in isolation mode, sorry. There, there it is. You come here, get you. What the hell? Delete that one. Delete. Get out of here. God damn it. Now, there we go. There we go. Okay. Live again. I'll go back to quad draw. Here. 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 There we go. Kind of just getting a good measurement, and then bring the laser. There you go. I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> so if I go here, and now I just insert my edge loops. Or I could even just bevel this, right? Be a lot quicker. Ah, oh, god damn it. Damn it. I don't want to cuss at home all the time. One more, one more. I'll combine these two. Add my material to it. The three. Boom. Boom. There you go, yeah? <laughs> cool. There you have it, right? And now we're detailing like crazy.
where like Satan makes like, you remember how I was showing you how to make patents last week? And then you want that patent to be on like a sphere? You can just take that patent and then shrink wrap it to the sphere. And now make the sphere a live object and then you can move the patent and put it in there. So there you go, boys and girls. That's how you start making like that light kind of chipping and all that stuff in there, yeah? All the engraving stuff. Yeah? Make life a lot easier. You make your surface live. Quad draw. Now, everyone, turn on your monitors, and you're going to pay attention to me as I do this as well, right? So you're going to turn on your monitor. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, I want you all to make a sphere. So shift and make a sphere. Just a sphere. Sphere. Okay. Now, while that sphere is selected, control one. And then hit F to zoom in on it. So we should all have that. Sphere, control, one, and then hit F. And move it up again above the, um, the grid line, yes? Now, I want you to do something. Select it, and you see the little... The first magnet, click the magnet. You notice something? Click the magnet. The f not that one. The one where it says uh, no Y. Now, click open your um, modeling tools, right? So we should have a, a list of tools on the side here. And if you don't know where that is, the little thing up there with the, uh, the hammer. Does everyone have that? Good. Now, down in the menu, there is something called quad Draw. Does everyone see that? Good. Click quad draw. All right. Now zoom into your sphere, please. And make your screen full screen. You don't need the other side open. Hit the space bar. There you go. Now watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Click a point, one point. So you see that point? Now, if you hover over that point as you get close to it, what happens? It turns yellow and your icon turns to a move tool. So now, look at this. You're moving your point anywhere you want on the ball. Click another point beside it over here. Now you have two, yes? How many points does it take to make a triangle? Four, three. Who said four? Oh my God. <laughs> so three points make a triangle, four points make a what? Square or a quad. Quad. So we have one, two, three, four, right? Make four points. And now, guess what? I can start moving these points anywhere I want, but I don't want to. I want to keep it square. I want to keep it into a quad, yes? Now, as you hover into the middle of this thing, hold down shift. Look what happens. It turns green. Just click on it. Now you've created a square. 
and you want to create another one, watch this. All you need to do is create two more points, two more points, two more points. Turn your viewport to shading to x-ray, and you'll be able to see what you're doing. Over here, shading, x-ray. No, wrong window. There you go. Now, watch this. I can also see my overlap uh, append mesh. I can turn that to, I like to go with a bright orange like that. That way it stands out. Or you can do a nice bright green. That way it stands out, yes. Nice bright red if you want, or pink, or whatever you want. Whatever you like. All right. Now, watch this. I'm creating points, yes. There you go. If I say, well, man, this is very uneven. Watch this. Hold down shift. No, 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 no. What? No. Uh, hold on. Oh, shit. They've switched this up in 2017. Damn it. Uh, okay. Keyboard shortcuts. There you go. Ah, okay, cool. See the keyboard shortcuts? That will tell you what you can do. There's shift and left mouse click. That's what I'm doing. It should allow me to smooth this out. And tab. Okay, tab and middle mouse click. You see, it's not letting me do it. Damn this program, man. Ew. Yeah, this funky crap. I think this one had bugs in it to where sometimes this stuff would work, sometimes it wouldn't. But you can relax these points. And this is not a good example because I can't do it. See, yeah, it's not working. Look at that. It's just not doing it. Normally, if you hit shift, you can it brings up a brush and you can paint over it and it will relax the mesh okay another thing you do if you hold down tab tab and middle mouse you can make the square bigger and then you can just what drag and you can drag stuff on there right? okay tab and right click but you know once you have something now you can just go shift right click and Extrude right on the surface. Bevel inward, and there you go, right? Mm. 
to try this one more time because I think if I go quad draw again, yeah, I, 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 I don't know what it's doing. Yeah, it's not doing it. It's not just, I don't know. Right, and the same with this, if you hit three, there you go, right? Pretty cool. You can create all kinds of armor. You can create all kinds of um, crazy uh, uh, um, insignia stuff. You can do stuff. Yeah, how did you select them again? Once you uh, put the other points that you want. Uh, yeah, I, it puts like all on me. And then once again, you can come in, select your edges, and crease. Okay. Yes. I thought there was an offset to this. It's not in this one, but there is in... All right, so... <clears throat> if I create a few points here, there you go. Yeah, see, on 2016, the the way the the um, the the new mesh on top of the old mesh it fights each other it fights each other in the new 2017 it the draw call the way it, it looks at the top mesh and the bottom mesh are perfect you can see perfectly what you're doing now if you want to get rid of a mesh um, see this is not working none of this I don't know what's going on I I, I have no clue. Like, none of this shit is working. Like, it's all... Anytime you hit one of these, it's it's blank. It give me that. Like, it can't do nothing. That's weird. That is just... And look, that's another thing. You can't even pick the points to move them. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. Mar at least Maria finds it funny. But that's one way of making sure you get like some really nice um, so kind of uh, that, that like chipping weld stuff onto your racks, right? That's one way. All right. And we'll, we'll go more into this stuff here in a little bit. So Tuesday, we're going to wrap this thing up for show. I'm going to make sure it's done. Just done. Okay. And uh, on Tuesday, I will show you quickly how to do the straps. 
Um, and then we're going to wrap this up. Okay? So we're going to move on to making that uh, like weapons crate, the sci-fi crate, right? Making it. And now we're stepping it up. We're really stepping it up. Because I said we'll, we'll give like two months of like high poly modeling, right? So over the next couple of weeks, we're going to get that high poly crate done, and then hopefully we're going to get a weapon done, a, a revolver, in like a, a Glock or something. But we're going to futurize it up a little. We're going to make it a little sci-fi weapon. And then what we're going to get into is taking the models that we've done and then low polying them, and then UVing, <laughs> and then texturing them. Okay? Thank you. What day is it? Thursday? God damn. <laughs> oh, my word, I'm coming and going half the time.